Seven reasons to use Google Calendar. Being able to share your schedule can be helpful in many ways. In a work environment, it can allow you to schedule meetings, let your coworkers know when you're out of office or on vacation. In an educational environment, it allows you to share activities you've planned with students or other educators. On a personal level, you might want to share your calendar with a spouse or family member to let them know about appointments or plans you've made for yourself or the family. Sending invites and receiving RSVPs. You can easily invite others to an event or meeting as well as request and receive notification about whether they will attend. Syncing with desktop. Google Calendar easily syncs with your desktop calendar such as iCal, Outlook, and, other desk and several other desktop applications. It's mobile. It also syncs with your mobile devices. So you're always in touch with your schedule no matter where you are. You can also manage your calendar to an extent for most mobile applications that work with Google. Working offline. If you ever find yourself in the unfortunate position of not being connected to the internet, you can still view your calendar, your Google Calendar offline. Reminders. You can set up Google Calendar to remind you about an event at any point prior, which is extremely helpful when you live a busy life. And the seventh reason, it's free. Um, but you can't beat with a stick. Google versus Outlook. Many people are familiar with, Go with Outlook in a professional environment. Outlook is generally a good piece of software with a great calendar system, but it has competition. Google's calendar is quite popular and for some good reasons. First, it's backed up on Google servers. If your computer dies or it gets attacked by a virus and you have to do fresh installs of all your software, all your Outlook calendar info will be gone. If you are interconnected with a corporate domain, your info may be backed up. But with Google Calendar, you know your calendar resides safely off your system. Two, it syncs with a lot of other apps. One of the reasons I think Google Calendar has become so popular is because it's so versatile and syncs with so many different other apps. For example, there are a lot of phone apps for organizations, such as to-do list style apps that run off a of Google Calendar. For a long time now, I've had a Google Calendar that I sync several programs with for personal use and have found it's been quite reliable. Three, it's easily accessible. I use Outlook Calendar for work because that's what my company uses. However, I do find myself sometimes freaking out if I'm not near my computer and I think I might have a meeting that day. I either have to start up my computer to check on the meeting time or open Outlook on my phone to check when the meeting is. When I write it into Google Calendar, it is right there on my Android phone's calendar. While I do get notifications from both, not everyone has access to this Outlook feature, depending on what type of mobile device they use. And lastly, it lets you share your calendar. Being able to share your calendar is not something you can do from within Outlook. Although when scheduling meetings, Outlook does allow you to view coworker schedules around a certain time. This is a similar feature as Google's, but doesn't work if you're not interconnected on the same domain, such as a work or education environment. You can bring a shared Google Calendar into Outlook, however. To get started using Google Calendar, you can just visit this URL, www.calendar.google.com. If you already have a Google account, you can just sign right in. If you don't have one, you can click Create an Account. And once you sign in, you'll be taken to Google Calendar. If you need to change any of your settings, you can go to the top right corner and click Settings. The browsers that work best with Google Calendar are the most recent versions of Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Safari. If you're on an Android phone or tablet, um, you can visit the Google Calendar page on Google Play and install it. Um, you can open the app and then sign in with your Google account. And if you're on an iPhone, you can go to iTunes and get the Google Google Calendar, go to the Google Calendar page and touch get. Open up the app and sign in with your Google account. Um, if you access Google Calendar through a phone browser, you probably want to use Google Chrome or Safari. Viewing someone else's calendar. 
Viewing someone else's calendar helps to A. Stock your coworkers, B. See other people's emails, or C. Plan meetings at a time when everyone is available. The answer is C. Here in Google Calendar on your computer, on the left column of the page, find other calendars. In the box, type the name or email address of the person whose calendar you want to see. Select their name. If their calendar is shared publicly or within your organization, you'll then see their events on your calendar. If, your cal if their calendar isn't shared publicly, you can re send a request they share their calendar with you and receive an email once they share it. If you don't want to see their calendar, you can show or hide their calendar by clicking their name, which will show in the other calendars section once it's added. Once someone has shared their calendar with you, or even if they're just part of an organization, you can check if they're available at a specific time when you add them to an event. Note that you can't add other people's calendars from within the Google Calendar app, but if you add them from your computer, then you'll be able to see them on the app. Sharing your calendar. Why would you want to share your calendar? You can show someone else your calendar, or you can create a community calendar that you can share with a group or you can share the calendar schedule of a resource, such as a, um, a computer that gets passed around from room to room or a television from classroom to classroom, um, and that needs to be scheduled on a, a separate calendar of its own. So if you wanna share a calendar um, on your computer, in Google Calendar on the left-hand side, you find My Calendars and you can click the drop down menu to expand if need be. Find the calendar you want to share and you'll see a little arrow next to it. Select share this calendar. Under share with specific people add the email address of the person you want to share with. For permission settings choose an applicable option from the drop down menu. Click Add Person and then click Save. Once you click Save, the person you shared your calendar with will get an email and invitation to view your calendar. Once they click the link in the email, your calendar will be added to their other calendars list. Note, you can only edit your calendar sharing settings from a computer, not from a mobile app. Once you've added the ability to see other schedules, you'll want to start inviting them to your events. On either your computer or the mobile app, open an event or create a new one. On a computer, find the Add Guest section on the right. On a mobile, you'll scroll down and touch Invite People. Start typing the name of the person and select the person from your contact list. You can also type an email address to invite people who aren't on your contacts list. Be sure to specify whether you'd like to allow the guest to modify the event, invite others, or see the guest list. When you're done editing the event, click Save. Now an email invitation will be sent to your guests. Notifications. Notifications are very important in this day and age. You can set uh, or edit your default no notifications for both regular events and all-day events. You can also choose to be notified with pop-up notifications, emails, or both. So to set your notifications, open Google Calendar on your computer. In the top right, click Settings, um, and then Settings again. At the top of the page, click the Calendars tab. Next to your calendar's name, click Edit Notifications. To edit a no notification, click on it or add another notification. Here's where you control that. On a mobile device, you can edit your default notifications for both regular events and all-day events. You can also choose to be notified with device notifications, emails, or both. Open the Google Calendar app. In the top left menu, touch Menu Settings. Choose one of your calendars like events. To change or remove a notification, touch it or touch add another notification. Your changes sync with your computer notifications. For example, if you chose 60 minutes before on your phone, you'll get a pop-up notification on your computer 60 minutes before your event, as well as on your phone. 
There are many calendar apps that sync well with Google Calendar for both computers and mobile devices. So it makes a lot of sense to use Google Calendars if you want to work with any of these calendar apps. With some calendar applications, you can sync just by using your Google, Google account. This means you can add and edit events from either Google Calendar or within the other app. Open your calendar application. Look for an option to add another account. This might be in Settings or Preferences. Sign in with your Google account. If you use two-step verification with your account, you'll have to enter an app password. Follow the steps to add your, your Google account. Troubleshooting syncing. Syncing is one of the only issues I've faced at times in the past that have made Google Calendar a slight frustration. That said, it's a great calendar once those issues are cleared up, so it's important to have some troubleshooting knowledge. Some of the most obvious things that could go wrong with syncing include making sure you're connected to the internet, checking that you're using the right app, be sure it's the official Google Calendar app and that it's up to date, checking that the calendar is visible. To do this in your mobile phone app, make sure the calendar either has a check mark next to it for Android or a colored box for iPhone. Other trouble, troubleshooting tips for Android include checking that the app is synced by visiting settings and checking that sync is on. Make sure calendar storage is turned on, which requires visiting your phone settings, not calendar settings, and finding the app in the application manager. Assuring your device isn't running out of storage by going to the storage section in your settings and freeing up some space. Clearing the calendar app data by visiting the phone settings, going to Application Manager, clicking on the calendar app, and then Clear Data. On the iPhone, you could try quitting the app and reopening it. Remove the account, then add it again by visiting Calendar App Settings, Manage Accounts, Edit, Remove Account, then Done. Or uninstall and then reinstall the app. And I think that um, uninstalling and reinstalling the app as well as quitting the app and reopening it are also options you could use in the Android phone to try. My personal and professional view of Google Calendars. After using Google Calendars extensively for many years in both personal and professional environments with countless apps and on both Mac and PC, I can conclude that it's a solid solution to keeping both your personal and professional life organized. When I used calendars in a professional corporate environment, it was relatively flawless in setting up meetings, reminding attendees, easy ability to view others' calendars, and integrating with Gmail, which was the company's email system. I also was able to sync my work calendars with the iPhone I used at the time, as well as with iCal on my Mac at home. On a personal level, I've used my Google Calendar account for probably at least 10 years. At one point a long time ago, I did a lot of research on calendar apps for the iPhone that would sync with Google's Calendar. For most people, this was a necessary feature to be assured that you could access your calendar wherever you are. Oops. If, it, if you add an event within the app, it will also show up on your desktop app, such as iCal. Today I have an Android phone, so I don't have to worry about finding a great calendar app and whether it will sync. Fortunately, Google comes factory set up on the Android system. So I just add my Google account name and the calendar widget and I'm good to go. Anything I add here, I can also view on my Samsung Note 10.1, as well as my iCal app on my Mac computer. They all sync together and I have found calendar organizational peace at last. Overall, I feel Google and Outlook are comparable products, both with a lot of good qualities. Which one you choose is based on your needs or the needs of your organization.